So we are in the territory of the second precept, not taking that which is not given and cultivating contentment, enoughness, practicing generosity. And this, this is really about countering greed, understanding and uprooting greed. And, you know, there's a lot of approaches in Buddhism, ways to work with greed, uproot greed on the cushion. Off the cushion, two of the main ways really are captured by this precept, the practice of generosity, and as one article put it, putting oneself in uncomfortable and unpleasant situations in order to become disenchanted with sensory pleasures. And I think that really captures this precept. And I want to focus on an aspect of what makes this hard, which is the energy of mine. Mine. That's mine. And so, you know, even feel into the energy of that word for a moment, how you notice it in your body, in your heart, when we are caught in mine. <laughs> I think uh, almost immediately of the character Gollum from The Lord of the Rings. Uh, he's the one who kind of is like, my precious, my precious, right? And that energy, the whole body, right, twisting into the focused on the object of the wanting. Everything narrowed on that, the leaning in and the kind of hoarding and protecting, right? Just want it for me. And, you know, we can feel this and it can lead us to take what is not ours. And thinking about this idea of mine, mine, or just the energy of that. If there's a mine, there's a me at the center, right? Without question. And if there's a me in that way, then there's a you. And we're very separate. And you become a threat to what's mine that scarcity viewpoint, right? Not enough, I have to get what's mine. We can feel how easy it can be if we act from that place to take, to hoard. We can feel that, we can feel that in ourselves and certainly in the world. And, you know, we all go through a developmental stage when mine becomes really important. And for any of you who have raised children or spent a lot of time with children, we know that like 18 months to about three years old, right? What's, what gets really loud? Mine, that's mine, it's my toy. And it's a very important stage. It's when we we realize that we are separate. There is a me here, right? Well, that's that time when we begin to look in the mirror and if there's like a sticker on our face, we'll actually go to our face and take it off rather than try to take it off the mirror's face, right? It's really important, important stage. But what comes with that? Tantruming, meltdowns, aggression. It's really hard to teach sharing when, when kids are that age. And so you know, I wanna name that just also so that we can be a little gentle with the energy of mine, the vulnerability that can be there, right? Mine, greed feels like the antidote or solution to the vulnerability of not having, the instability of life. And for me, I've always struggled with uh, some greed energy, mine energy, certainly when it comes to food. Um, and I wanted to share, you know, I've noticed that that has increased for me, that mine energy as I've lived with uh, 
a chronic illness, that when it's um, flaring, what I can eat goes from this to like this, right? Goes to like this. And so if I, I would notice that if I was hosting a gathering or attending a gathering and I brought food that I could eat or made something, you know, here would be the one or two things I could eat. And then here would be the things that everyone else could eat. And I would get that kind of gala mine energy. People would move toward the thing that, that I could eat and it would, you know, what am I, am I gonna have enough? Are they gonna take it? It's not fair. Like, why don't they eat their other stuff? You know, everything tight and I can feel it now. And, and then when the gathering would be over and people would leave, there'd be no need to protect and that energy would dissipate. And I would feel just like so much sadness, almost like I was coming out of a fever. You know, like, what happened? Why didn't I offer? Why didn't I share? It's kind of guilt and regret. And also often would be like, there was plenty. There was plenty. Why did, where, where, why did I think there wasn't enough? And as I've worked with that, it, you know, it hasn't just been like forcing myself to share, but also recognizing and turning towards some of the vulnerability that was there for me because of my illness and because of like my own inner tantruming toddler and my own inner golem being able to kind of say, yeah, it is hard. It is hard to not be able to eat all the things you want to eat and to see other people being able to have all these things, there's jealousy there. But the mind, the mind energy, right? That's not the solution to that. That's not the solution to that pain and vulnerability, right? I can be with that. I can be with the shakiness of not having or not knowing if I'm going to have enough. And so we can think about, you know, what is that for you? In addition to, we all have the capacity for greed and wanting and mind energy. Are there kind of areas or experiences you have or carry that kind of intensify that for you? Around kind of wanting to protect and hoard and take. The Buddha said, if beings knew as I know the results of giving and sharing, they would not eat with ha without having given. If beings knew as I know the results of giving and sharing, they would not eat without having given. And I had an experience uh, at a retreat where I feel like I was able to uh, step out a little bit of that mind energy where because of my limits around what I can eat, I had brought with me all these treats because I thought I couldn't quite bear it. I thought if, you know, I'm at the retreat and, you know, sometimes they give desserts or cakes. And um, so there it was, that's interesting, right? That I, I kind of wouldn't let myself be with that, not having, I brought a bunch of stuff. And once I was there, I realized I, I had so much. It was, it was almost silly. And um, and, and I really encouraged myself, like, let's offer this. Many of you know, at retreats, you can kind of offer things for the group. You just kind of write Donna, whether it's food or other items. And so I really, um, invited myself to work my edge. I gave almost all, not kept a little for myself, but, um, and put out the treats in the dining area with a little Donna sign. And I'm just kind of touching into it now again, right? It's like, this is a decade ago and I can still feel the joy and the happiness and the glee of seeing people walk by and discover and maybe take and try and enjoy and kind of over a day or two watching the little offering kind of diminish more and more people taking and taking. It really, really brings me joy even now and keeps kind of giving to me in this way. 
And that feels like such a lesson of, you know, the joy of any kind of sensory pleasure, right? This disenchantment with sensory pleasure and wanting and hoarding that. Anytime I've had something delicious to eat, it's the pleasure's gone, right? It's, it's gone. I don't remember any of it. But this, the joy of uh, countering that mine energy, that greed energy, it's still with me years, years later. And the enoughness, right? The, re the reminder also of that experience is that I had more than enough and actually I would have been fine without bringing anything. And we, can, we can go without so much more than we think. And so this precept is so important and, and working with the energy of mind and in our world, how important this is, right? The, the impact of that scarcity mindset that primes us all to want more and to take more, to view others as a threat to what we have, to view the earth's resources as something to own and hoard only for the very few. And so just want to invite us all to kind of notice, however it shows up for you, the energy of, of mine, that's mine, <laughs> how that feels for you. Maybe in moments touching into the vulnerability underneath that, the fears and the, the not knowing, the instability of life, and invite ourselves into a different way of meeting that, being with that. And then also kind of feeling into or maybe even remembering moments when you have relinquished that energy and given generously or shared wide in the lens of your heart. It's like, what does that feel like? What's that been like for you? And so this quote by the Buddha, if beings knew as I know the results of giving and sharing, they would not eat without having given. And, and maybe even expanding that was thinking, would we maybe take anything without giving first? Giving literally or maybe giving thanks, appreciation. So thank you for listening. <laughs>